All right, we're back with the second part of the related rates video. So here we're having a house that's one mile north of the intersection between a highway. So this horizontal road is a highway, and then this is just, I guess, some regular street. So if we go one mile north of the highway or this intersection, excuse me, we get to this house, and then this car is driving on the highway, and then these are mile markers. So let's take a look at this. The red dots indicate the distance between the highway, between the house and the car at any given time. So as the car drives from left to right, you can see that as we are, oops, I gotta move a little bit back. The distance between the car and the house is one mile, I guess. And then as we start driving further and further, the distance increases. So when the car is four miles away from the intersection, the distance between the house and the car is a little bit over four miles. So that's the setup. And we're told that one mile from a house down a straight road is an intersection. A highway runs through the intersection perpendicular to the road of the house. Suppose that an automobile travels 60 miles per hour along the highway. So the speed of this car going from left to right is 60 miles per hour. Then we have a couple of questions. How fast is the distance between the car and the house increasing when the car is three miles past the intersection? So let's take a look at that one. So here we have that, that's the house, that's the highway, that's the intersection, that's the car. Car is going in this direction to the positive, uh, to the right hand side this distance z is changing as the car goes from left to right. The y distance does not change, so it's really just the constant. And then dx dt, as we were given, is 60 miles per hour. So these are our givens, and what we need to find is what is dz dt? How fast is the distance between the house and the car changing when the car is exactly three miles past the intersection? So somewhere here, when x is three, how fast is the distance between the car and the house changing? So we start with uh, Pythagorean theorem application, x squared plus y squared equals z squared. We can replace the y with the constant one. So we really have x squared plus one squared or one equals z squared. Now when x is equal to three, at that moment, we can actually figure out what the distance is as well. So if x is equal to 3, we can replace x with 3 and get z squared is equal to 10, which implies that z is equal to square root of 10. Uh, we ignore the negative because, again, z is the distance between two objects. It cannot be negative. So it can't be negative square root of 10. So if we differentiate both sides with respect to time, the derivative of x squared would be 2x dx dt. Derivative of 1 would just be 0. Derivative of z squared would be 2z dz dt. Now we can replace the constants where they belong. So 2 times x, which will be 3, because we're 3 miles past the intersection, times dx dt. How fast is the car moving in that direction? 60 miles per hour. Equals 2 times z. Well, z is root 10, times dz dt. And this is the rate that we're looking for. So if we just divide uh, 2 root 10 to the other side, we can isolate dz dt. You can stop right here for a free response question. Just make sure you tag it with the units, miles per hour. Should you wish to simplify it, you end up with 180 over root 10 miles per hour. And we can interpret this result as when the car is specifically or exactly three miles past the intersection, the distance between the car and the house is increasing. We know that it's increasing because this rate is positive at 180 over root 10 miles per hour. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention in the first video, uh, but I guess it's might as well mention it now, never, ever, ever plug in your constants before you have found the derivative. You must find the derivative and then plug in your constants. Never do it before. Uh, if you do it before, you're gonna mess things up or your derivatives will vanish or you, you won't have rates that need to be found. For 4.2, Let's take a look at this. How fast is the distance between the car and the house increasing 
when the car is X miles past the intersection. So now we're being asked to generalize the result. Instead of being given specifically three miles past the intersection, what happens if it's some distance past the intersection and that distance is X? Well then, we, we start with the same thing again. X squared plus one squared, because Y is one, equals Z squared. Z can be solved for here because X is unknown. It's a constant, but we don't know what it is. X could be any number after zero. So we know that z is equal to square root of x squared plus 1. This is something we found in the previous part, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can just say that we're using this from part 4.1. So we know that 2x dx dt equals 2z dz dt. Instead of x being 3, because we don't know how far past the intersection the car is, we just replace it with x, because we don't know how far it is dx dt, we still know that it's moving, or we know that it is still moving at 60 miles per hour, so this stays. And then z is really just square root of x squared plus 1. We just figured that out right here, times dz dt. So in order to solve for dz dt, we just divide this expression over to the other side and get that. Nothing here needs to be simplified. In fact, nothing can be simplified. So this is our answer in miles per hour. An interpretation of it would be when the car is x miles past the intersection, the distance between the car and the house is increasing at this many miles per hour. 4.3 asks us to verify whether this formula even makes sense. So it's just a sanity check. So the question says, find dz dt using this formula when you are three miles past the intersection. We've already done this first. We, this was 4.1. If this formula is correct, we should get the same answer we got two parts ago. So 60 times x, x we're given is 3, over square root of 3 squared, x squared plus 1. And lo and behold, 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. We get the same number we got earlier. So, so far, so good. Then we're also asked to find what dz dt is at x equals 0. So if we plug that in, 60 times 0 is 0 over square root of 0 squared plus 1 is just 1, 0 divided by 1 is 0. So at the intersection itself, the distance between the car and the house is not changing at all. They're right underneath each other on the intersection. That's why this is 0 miles per hour. And 4.4... Suppose the speed of the car x miles past the intersection is a function s of x. Instead of it being a constant 60 miles per hour, the speed might be going up, down, maybe there's traffic on the road or on the highway, and the car speeding up and then tapping on the brakes and then speeding up again. s of x is now dx dt. We don't know what that function is, it's no longer that constant. How fast is the distance between the car and the house increasing when the car is x miles past the intersection. So now we have the most generic form of the solution. We still have the same relationship, 2x dx dt equals 2z dz dt. Instead of dx dt being 60, now we know that it is s of, oh, this should be x. S defined in terms of t or x? Pretty sure it's x, yep. Yeah. In fact, I made a mistake and now I'm recognizing that I made a mistake. Um, oh no, I didn't. Never mind. So, 2x, well, that's 2x because we're still x miles past the uh, intersection. dx dt now is a function of the location. It's not a function of time. It's a function of how far you are. So maybe the closer you are to the house, you slow down because there might be kids playing or whatever the case might be. But then the farther away you get from the house, maybe you pick up some speed because now you're out on the highway and there's no one else around you. So dx dt gets swapped out with s of x equals 2z dz dt. We can divide both sides by dz and get dz dt, or sorry, we can divide both sides by 2z and get dz dt equals 2x s of x. I guess I wrote it correctly here, but this was a typo. 
over 2z, 2s cancel out. So this is our relationship in miles per hour. So we can say when the car is x miles past the intersection, the distance between the car and the house is increasing at s x times s of x over z miles per hour. Let's look at number five. Ah, this is the standard shadow problem. So very, very simple question. Skateboarders skating away from a lamppost. And you'll notice that the closer he is to the lamppost, the shadow is very short because the light's coming from directly above. But as time goes on, the further away he gets, the longer the shadow gets because now uh, the light is coming in at an angle, so the longer the shadow is. Uh, we're told that the skateboard rolls away from a 15-foot lamppost, so this will always be 15 feet, at a speed of 3 feet per second. Because he's moving to the right, dx dt will be 3 feet per second, not negative. Now, had he been moving to the left, that would indicate negative 3 feet per second. The boy's height on the skateboard is 6 feet. So again, his height is not going to change during this experiment. So it'll stay the same throughout. Two questions here. Find the rate at which his shadow is increasing in length. So let's take a look at that one first. So here's a simplified version of the same drawing. We have a lamppost that's 15 feet high. The distance between the boy and the lamppost, because it's a horizontal distance, I called it x. The boy is six feet tall, and then there's the length of a shadow indicated by the letter S. He's moving to the right, which indicates that dx dt must be positive three feet per second. Now, hopefully you remember that this, is, uh, this can be uh, solved by using similar triangles. So height over height is equal to base over base. So six over 15 equals S over s plus x. And so this is going to be our relationship that we differentiate. Now we could differentiate it right here. The derivative of 6 over 15 would be 0 because it's a constant. That part's easy. However, to find the derivative of this expression, we would have to use quotient rule, which is going to be quite messy. But what happens if we simplify some uh, algebraic expressions? So we can cross multiply here and get 6 times s plus x equals 15s. Distribute the 6, move the 6s to the other side, and we get this much nicer expression, 6x equals 9s. This is much easier to differentiate with respect to time. So if we differentiate 6x, we just get 6x, 6 dx dt. If we differentiate 9s with respect to time, we get 9 ds dt. Now we're told what dx dt is, uh, or in fact, in order to solve for ds dt, I just isolated it first by dividing both sides by 9. We can clean this up. 6 over 9 reduces to 2 over 3 dx dt. And then finally, we know 2 thirds is a constant, so that comes along. And then dx dt, we know he's moving to the right at 3 feet per second. Uh, reduce the fraction, and you get 2 feet per second. So the rate at which the boy's shadow is increasing, we know it's increasing because this rate is positive. Had this been negative, we would have said decreasing. In length is two feet per second. Let's look at part two. Uh, if the boy's height on the skateboard is h feet and he rolls away from the lamppost at a rate of s feet per second, at what rate is his shadow length increasing? This type of question, not this question itself, but this type of question or this formulation of question is very, very popular on the AP exam, where part A might be, you know, come up with a, a specific answer to a specific problem. Part two will ask you to generalize it. And then part three may or may not ask you to say confirm or do a sanity check on your answer. Does your answer actually work out uh, with your answer from part one? Let's see how we would tackle something like this. Same setup, uh, nothing changes, although I want you to pay attention to one change here. S got swapped out for L. The reason for that is this, the rate at which he's moving to the right was now given as S. I cannot have that be S and also a dimension be S as well. We cannot have the same letter be used for two different indications or two different dimensions or two different rates. 
So everything else stays the same, except this distance just has to be relabeled as L. Now, had I read part two of the question before I started writing, it would have been safer or cleaner just to keep this as L from the very beginning, but that's okay. So here we can use the same H over 15 equals L over L plus X. We cross multiply, we get everything down to HL plus HX equals 15L. This stage we can differentiate both sides with respect to time. Now remember, H is a constant. The height of the person is not changing while they're skateboarding. L on the other hand is a variable. L is this distance that changes. So imagine this to be something like 5L. The derivative of 5L would just be 5 dl dt plus h times x. x is the distance between the lamppost and the boy. This is changing. That's a variable. But the height of the boy is not changing. That's a constant. So the derivative of hx would just be h dx dt. The derivative of 15l would be 15 dl dt because the length of the shadow changes. Excuse me. Now we plug in the numbers that go where they belong. Uh, we know, oh wait, this is just copied here again. New page, new line. And we want to solve for dl dt. We want to know how fast the, the length of the shadow is changing. So I can move this term over to the left-hand side and get h dl dt minus 15 dl dt equals negative hs. We can factor out a dl dt from both these terms and get negative hs on one side and dl dt times h minus 15. And here you have dl dt equals negative hs over h minus 15 feet per second. So an interpretation of this would be the rate at which the boy's shadow is increasing in length the rate at which the boy's shadow is increasing in length, uh, this doesn't read well. Rate at which increasing in length is not at. So the rate at which the boy's shadow is increasing in length is negative HS over H minus 15 feet per second. I want you to pause the video. That was obviously a grammatical mistake, but there's actually something mathematical that, that's funky that's going on. So pause the video, think about what this sentence means and if it fits well with things that you expect to happen and whatnot. So hopefully you've had time to think about this and you saw that we said that something was increasing at a negative rate because negative HS will make this entire fraction negative. Now pause the video again and see if you can reconcile this quote unquote mistake. If it's negative, should we have just said decreasing at a positive at HS over negative H minus 15? Or can we reconcile that this really is an increasing rate because the length of the shadow is actually getting longer? So pause the video, come back to it in a moment. If we rewrite negative hs over h minus 15, and we factor out a negative from the denominator, we'll get negative hs over negative negative h plus 15, which we can rewrite as negative hs over negative 15 minus h. These two negatives can cancel each other out, and we get hs over 15 minus h. The reason why our answer looks negative is because I chose to move this term to the left-hand side. Had we chosen to move h dl dt over to the right-hand side, you'll notice that this hs would have remained positive. So it's just algebraic trickery. Both of these things are the same. They're both positive. It just looks like this rate is negative because there's a negative up top. But h is actually less than 15. Think about what h represents h is the height. So if we do h minus 15, we're going to get a negative number in the denominator. If we divide a negative number by a negative number, we'll get a positive. So actually, I lied. There's nothing wrong with this. You can write it this way, or you can say increasing in length is 
HS over 15 minus H. Both would be considered correct. Hopefully that makes sense. Last question, we send a rocket off to space. So in this question, uh, there's an observation area, I guess, and there's a rocket that's 10 kilometers away. And there's a telescope pointed at the top of the rocket. So there's, because the rocket has some height, there's an angle of incidence or an angle of observation. As we play this animation, as the rocket goes up, you have to keep moving the either your head further and further back if you're looking at it in real time, or if you're looking at it through the telescope, the telescope, ang the angle between the telescope and the ground has to increase in order to keep up with the rocket. So as the rocket gets higher and higher, the angle increases as well. So roughly we're talking about Pyro 3, yeah. So rocket travels vertically from a launch pad 10 kilometers away. So this is where the rocket was launched from from an observer with a telescope. The observer is sitting at the origin with the telescope. At a certain moment, the angle between the telescope and the ground is pi over three radians. So this is about 60 degrees, pi over three radians. And it is changing at a rate of 0 0.5 radians per minute. So you can imagine turning your head backwards and sort of looking at something higher and higher, and you're the rate at which your head is leaning back or rotating backwards is 0 0.5 radians per minute. What is the rocket's velocity in kilometers per minute at that moment? So the rocket is going in a vertical direction. So we can call that distance y. So we're looking for dy dt. Let's come back here. So again, this is the simplistic version of it. Uh, there's a rocket and the distance between the top of the rocket and the ground is y kilometers. And this is the angle, or this, that's the line of sight. This is the angle being made by the telescope versus the horizontal. And we know that this is 10 kilometers apart. So at some point of time, as the rocket goes up in the air, it makes exactly an angle of pi over three with the telescope or with the observer looking through the telescope. At that instant, it is y kilometers off the ground. So we call this distance y for no other reason than it's a vertical distance. You could have called it p as well, should you choose to. We know that d theta dt is 0 0.5 radians per minute. So that's the rate at which this angle is increasing. Now, in this particular case, we're not talking about the distance between the observer and the rocket. If that were the case, we would use the Pythagorean uh, theorem for, for this problem to set up a ratios of a right triangle. In this case, we're, we're talking about the angle at which you're observing a rocket going up into space. So here, since we know a horizontal or an adjacent side, and we're talking about a vertical side or an opposite side, tangent comes to mind because tangent relates those two, uh, those two sides, opposite over adjacent. So we can say that tangent of pi over three must be y over 10. Multiply both sides by 10 and you get y equals 10 tangent of pi over three. Tangent of pi over three is root three. So we get that y, which is the distance between the ground and the top of the rocket at that moment is 10 root three kilometers. That's how high the rocket is off the ground. At the moment, your head is tilted back pi over three radians. So if we're asked to find dy dt, we probably need to differentiate the relationship we have with respect to time. So if we differentiate tangent theta, we get secant squared theta d theta dt equals derivative of y over 10 would just be 1 tenth dy dt. We can move this 10 over to the other side and get dy dt equals 10 secant squared theta d theta dt. We know uh, theta is pi over three and d theta dt is 0 0.5. So if we plug that in, we get 10 secant squared of pi over three times 0 0.5. Clean this up and you get 20 kilometers per minute. So a way that we can interpret our answer is when the angle between the telescope and the ground is pi over three radians, the rocket's height is increasing at 20 kilometers per minute. Now you can either say this, or you can answer the question directly and say the rocket's velocity is 20 kilometers per minute. Now, if you say the rocket's height 
you have to say that it's increasing because the height of the rocket is going up. However, it would be incorrect to say that the rocket's velocity is increasing at 20 kilometers per minute. The velocity is 20 kilometers per minute. The height is increasing at that rate. So you want to be very careful with what exactly your sentence is saying. I wanted to give the answer with the rocket's height, so you see in the context of the problem how we would write it. But if we're answering the question specifically the way it was asked, which was, what is the rocket's velocity at that moment? You would say, at the moment that the angle between the telescope and the ground is pi over 3, the rocket's velocity is 20 kilometers per minute. And that's all I had in part two. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of what types of questions and what types of, uh, of thinking and how you want to approach these problems and how involved they can be. Hopefully it helps you with all those things. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day.